Hello, this is Professor Wallach. I just wanted to walk you through how we got things set up here with our synth workstation for the fall 2021 semester. I uh, just finished got just got finished setting it up, and so hopefully I can walk you through what the signal flow is like, so uh, people can start getting in here and uh, working with it. I'm going to assume uh, that based on watching other videos and other class demonstrations, you uh, are able to get the Synthi or the Eurorack set up actually um, making sound. What I want to hope to work through is not so much how to get specific sounds out of them, but how the signal is uh, routed through here just to get sound out to the speakers, but also going to the computer for recording purposes. Um, so everything is running into this um, mixer here. So this mixer is set up uh, in a rack. Uh, it does have a, a power switch here, uh, which if it's off, you go ahead and flip it on, and things will s turn on in sequence so that it makes sure that you don't get any pops in the system, basically. So uh, you can, t uh, when you're done, you should also turn it off so that everything is reset and you're not using up power when it's not in use, basically. So I've got it on right now. Um, both the Eurorack and the Synthi are being routed into this mixer, which then the mixer is being routed both to the speakers and to the computer separately. So it's two inputs going to two different outputs. You can think of it that way. Um, my advice in, in working with all of this is to start with the levels down on each of these things and, and, and work your way up. Uh, and most of these things have the word level on them, but you'll also see the word trim. You'll also see uh, possibly the word gain. Uh, I don't see the word gain anywhere. It seems to be level or trim. So just look for those two keywords on, on dials uh, for working your way through things. The mixer here gives us um, control not only of levels of our individual synths, okay, uh, and they're in pairs here with the Eurorack left and right here and the Synthi one and two here. Um, I find that the trims need to be turned all the way to the left to get a good level. Again, these can get loud in a hurry, so make sure you're working from the levels down and gradually working it up. Uh, in order to get proper left and right separation, you do need the pan knobs down here, turned left, then right, left, then right, okay. Um, then the sound in this mixer is going two different places. It's first going to the speakers, so you've got speaker control here. Okay, and then it's also connected to the computer through this knob here. So this will actually turn the level up and down on the computer recording. Uh, I find that it works best when that's just all the way to the right, uh, and that's a good level for sending sound to the, the computer. Okay. Once you've gotten a patch set up on your Synthi uh, to get the initial sound out of it, again, the trim's turned all the way down, but then just turn the levels up here. Okay. Make sure the level is up on the Synthi as well on these output knobs. Uh, and I did find that uh, you can disable the internal speakers with these switches right here. So make sure that they're in the mute position. Uh, the one on the left, you have to actually flip it to the right. The one on the right, it's the center position that turns it mute. But if I flip this back on, you can hear how the internal speaker turns back on. And that's not usually what you want. You usually want to be able to hear it just in the speakers that are um, the, at least the speakers that are next to the computer, okay? Uh, it can be distracting to have both speakers on simultaneously, but once you've got that, you should be able to play around with the knobs and work with the sound to shape your, your timbre overall. Uh, know that the Eurorack does have left and right outputs. Uh, but if you connect only something to the left, it acts as a mono, and so the signal is going to go to both speakers. So you need to connect to both left and right if you want to make a, an actual stereo connection here. Uh, the key thing is going to be making sure that all these connections are right. So make sure that you've got left and right output yellow and purple connected. But then also, in order to get sound in the computer, you need the USB connection connected, and then these connected to these uh, smaller black cables connected to one and two. And I went ahead and connected a, a, a put a green Velcro on the, the number two, which is the right channel coming out to connect so you can tell them t uh, apart. Once you've got sound uh, coming out of your speakers for what you want to record, uh, you want to get sound into your, uh, your DAW. I'm opening up in Logic here. You should see that there's a, a device now called the ES8. That's the name of that audio interface that actually sits in the, audio, in the uh, Eurorack unit. Uh, what you can do is just select this, and then it should be just channels one and two. Okay, so this is what it looks like in Logic. 
here's what it looks like in live uh, if you look for this ES8 control um, again. And it's going to give you a little bit of a, a warning to make sure you're doing that. You can also send sound back out to the ES8. Uh, it's not currently connected that way, so probably if you want to listen to the output in, in live, just use, choose the built-in output for now. But ES8 is the key input that you want if you want to be able to record directly into live. Uh, and then you should be able to, on your audio input, uh, actually choose uh, channels 1 or 2 or just 1 slash 2 uh, for stereo recording. Uh, and you can see how the monitor, uh, if I turn this, yeah, you can see how the monitor starts moving up and down to show me that there's signal coming from the, the synthesizers. Okay, and that should be it for uh, working with these hardware synthesizers and in terms of how they're connected to the speakers. Hopefully you have a good time working with these and coming up with some interesting sounds for your project.